when we align with who we truly are, magical stuff happens. Yeah, and, 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 and when, I, those, when those magical things happen, make sure that you've got a your recorder or you've got a notebook around and have that all over the house, like have that in the toilet, have that in the kitchen, wherever it happens, so you can note it down next to your bed. So when that, that magical stuff happens, you've got a place to record it before it gets lost in the woods again. Welcome to Marketing with Vino, the edutainment business growth podcast, mixing education and entertainment to make growing your service business much more fun. Your hosts, Quinton Venter, online marketing expert, and Gabby Kowalski, creator of the Business Freedom Formula, have a glass of wine and share powerful and up-to-date strategies to help grow your service business fast. Hey, hey guys, welcome to another amazing episode with Marketing with Vino. Joining us is the most amazing Gabs. Welcome, Gabs. Hello, awesome humans. Hello, gorgeous Quinton. Oh, so excited about this episode. There's two things I'm excited about. One, the topic we're covering for everybody. And two, that Quinton's actually going to be drinking on this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. For those of you um, tuned in the past two shows, I actually didn't have anything to drink. Um, more so, I didn't, go, I didn't go and buy anything to drink. Um, but we got a supply. Um, so it is Taylor's. It's a beautiful blend. Um Taylor's sponsored this episode. Um, what about yourself, Gabs? Um, what are you well, drinking? What's going on? This is some lovely H2O from the uh, from the regions of... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm currently doing this awesome program called Wild Fit where it's, it's about stripping back our food and taking me back to the human diet. Apparently, like, you know, every... It's funny. The, um, well, why is it funny? Because ultimately... Humans are the only creatures that go on a diet where everybody else has a diet. So, you know, the elephant's got an elephant diet, the dog has a dog diet, where humans have to go on a diet. The, um, and so for me, in my goal of wanting to achieve the best physical self I could possibly get to, uh, one of those journeys was to find out more about food and what I was putting in to make sure that I put in only the best stuff and the stuff that makes sense for the human. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, learned a lot, done a lot. And so as a part of this program, there's this section where, where, where I'm cleaning my body of stuff. So I'm not drinking alcohol at the moment. Again, and I know you probably, if you've been, <laughs> no, you're going to go, okay, didn't you have this whole alcohol-free section a few months ago? I did, but that was self-inspired. This is enforced by this program. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm loving it. Um, so yeah, guys, oh, so excited. The topic that we're going to share with you right now is so dear to my heart. It's one of my most favorite topics in the whole wide world. And what it is, it's it's how to grow your business in flow, meaning that there are times that we grow our business and it's hard work. We feel like we're, you know, it feels like it's all too hard. We try this, we try that. That didn't work, that didn't work. You know, it's kind of like a, uh, a stumbling effect where you know some stuff goes right and some stuff goes wrong and it's a bit of an uphill battle. Uh, if you have been in a place where you felt like growing your business has been an uphill battle and you'd love to have your business, uh, growing your business, instead of being an uphill battle, be more like a riding down the stream in a canoe on a beautiful day where the, where the wind just pushes you and you barely even have to touch the oars. <laughs> if I... <laughs> Sounds, sounds like, almost like a fairy tale to many, but that's, it does, that's, right? how, that's how it can be. It can be, and it's all to do with our state. It's all to do with the your vibe. It's all to do with the identity, the personality, the mindset. I truly believe that all results are eighty percent who you are, and only twenty percent what and how you do it. Meaning that you know if if you if you're desperate and you're marketing from a place of, shit, I need new clients, I can't pay my bills, and there's like this smell of desperation on you, and your marketing sucks. Yeah. You know, on the flip side, if you're thriving and you're just grateful and feeling awesome and you're conscious to all the awesome things that are happening in your business, you do marketing and it's epic. It, 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 there's, just, there's no like yucky, you know, yucky sales stuff in it. It's just pure give, pure love. And it connects beautifully. Yeah. So, without further ado, we've already started the topic. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Gabs? It is. It's exactly as you say. Um, it reminds me of um, just recently. Um, we had this actually at the winery, 
Um, this was, um, when was it? It was, I want to say yesterday, but it was actually the day before. Um, afterwards, we went to go out and we had some drinks, right? At the winery where you and I, we first um, started this concept of marketing with vino. And we were just having this chat and it was um, around other um, highly influencers in the industry, um, especially in their area. One was um, with the financial industry, another one was a um, mortgage uh, broker, and then um, another one was business partner. But we're just having this conversation, and somewhere along the lines, it came up with um, it, it's, it's hard to sell um, to friends. And I, I thought about it, and it, it's like I actually find it the most easiest thing to sell to friends. And the, the thing is, I get so when I get so excited and passionate about something, whether it's a book, whether it's you have to read this book and you can really feel the passion come behind it, that's where the influence comes through. Where whether it's I'm selling them a book, or the idea of a book to read, or it's actually me enrolling them into a program that I believe is a great fit for them, it is all coming from that state. And it's literally I just get amped up and fired up. And it, it may be that you need to watch this TED talk. Or you need to what if, do this book or whatever, but it's that state that comes and it just flows through. Yes, but here's where I believe the magic happens. It's actually based on our beliefs. It's what's going on behind the scenes that what do you believe about that though? You know, so what are your beliefs about selling to friends? Um, it's it's the belief around this will help them. This will actually help them get the results that they want. Um, and if it doesn't, then it doesn't, but it's still for them to take the action. And I believe so strongly that this is their current thing that they're looking for. So uh, I come behind it with that's, that's actually there to help them. Yes, it's the belief behind it. Wow. And ultimately, yeah, I'm hearing from what I'm hearing, though, is you believe you're serving. You believe you're adding value. Yeah. Other people have a belief that goes, I'm a, I sound like a pushy network marketer. The, um, and if they have a belief that, you know, trying to sell to my friends or convince my my friends is a bad thing because no one likes salespeople, then of course they're going to struggle with selling any any concept to their friends or family. Here's the funny part, though. That goes all the way back to what do you believe about selling? You know, say so my relationship with selling is beautiful mm -hmm. because I believe we're all salespeople. You know, it's not uh, – you don't have to sell uh, expensive products to call yourself a salesperson. The um every single one of us every time you get your own way <laughs> you yeah. you sold someone you know every time you taught like when you were a kid and you're like mom can I please have a cookie and she's like no and you're like oh but mom you know the more you tried to close her the more you tried to convince <laughs> her you're selling and you, we've been all of us sell and isn't it funny that you know that ultimately it all comes back down to the mindset of what's your relationship like with sales? What do you believe about selling? Because if as business owners we have a shitty relationship with selling and we believe selling is a problem, guess what's going to happen in our business? We're going to see that problem and we're going to feel that problem. We're going to, net, we're going to have more people renege. We're going to find it challenging to close. Our closing rate's going to suck. Yeah. There's just going to be all these different things that pop up. And guess what? That's not the truth. That's just because of the vibration you're putting out. That's because your vibe around selling is weird. That when you get to selling, you get all awkward or, you know, and that's not like that. That's just that's just one thing. To me, everything is vibration. Everything is mindset. Yes. Everything is all of it. It's what do you believe about that? You know, money is 100% about that. You know, if you believe that making six figures is hard, guess what? It's hard. If you believe making seven figures is hard, then it's hard. If you believe it's easy, it becomes easy. And it's funny, I was recently just uh, recently looking at my own my own story and somewhere, and I don't know where, but somewhere I decided unconsciously, right? Like I literally just found this belief out on Monday and went, whoa, had no idea you were there. The um I had a belief that um, that doing seven figures in my business to click to that seven figure mark to churn, churn over into the sevens and not the sixes because I'm currently in the sixes. Yeah. The um I had a belief going into the seven figure mark. The um meant that I was going to have less time. I'd have more people to manage, and it's a pain in the ass. And I don't friggin' need it anyway. Like I'm happy and content. With the, with the money that I have, I have what I need and want and I get to live life the way I want to, yeah. that why would I go and put all this effort in 
Now, here's the funny part. I had a belief somewhere that it meant I was going to lose my freedom. It meant that I was going to be robbed of or something was going to happen that my time would be taken away. And, and that happens. Saw, it, that, that actually comes true then after a while and it does become hard and you do start to recognize. It's like you're, you're recognizing the convinces that's reinforcing the belief of these things happening and the more you don't want it, it's not coming to you. Yeah. It's such and a powerful he, insight. But it massive. Like this, this honestly, like just, oh, it's one of those moments where your whole – world just flashes in like you're like whoa did not know that was going on the um the funny part is in recognizing it and in making it bullshit because if we have bullshit beliefs and ultimately any belief is bullshit that doesn't empower you to have your dreams come true yeah so you know like none of it's real everything's an illusion you can either choose to believe in stuff that's awesome and makes you feel great or stuff that hinders you and this is no different to people in business having beliefs that, oh, it's always slow in January. No, it's not. Mm. It's only slow for you and everybody else you talk to because you guys have collectively decided to believe that. It's <laughs> the, so true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. The, uh, and so for me, I was like, oh, my head went, I can't believe I did that. And in having that belief, I was actually stopped in seeing the ability to scale my business to seven figures, go global, do stuff purely because that belief was there and so I couldn't see past the belief unconsciously. As soon as it disappeared and I'm like, hold on a minute, seven figures is just as easy as six. The um, What a stupid belief to go seven is hard. Seven is just as easy as six. The, uh, and as soon as I declared that and like sort of, you know, put power and passion into it, the whole game changed. I've had all these awesome um, ideas and shifts and things have happened in the last 24 hours that I'm so excited about. <laughs> the Ultimately, though, like this is where, to me, if something's not working in your business, if you're experiencing friction, if you're going uphill, you know, and battling, ask yourself, what do I believe about this? You know, and this is, this is like, to me, uh, 2.0 of the podcast that Quinton and I did a couple of podcasts ago when we when we said to you guys, you know, if you're struggling growing with your marketing, ask yourself, am I ready for the um, the growth that I want? Like if I was to triple my business tomorrow, what would break? Yeah. And because often we, we don't grow for a few reasons and one will experience friction because it's actually the best thing for you. It's the universe looking after you. Yeah. Because it doesn't want you to break. Well, you can you can only handle as much as you can actually handle, and you will only get as much as what you can handle. And yep. it, it's it's like you're saying, it's the way of the the way that the universe is. Whether you believe in the higher self or God or whatever it is, the way that higher self, the universe, is looking out for you, it's only giving you what you can actually handle at that point in time. And that's where you really need to go and check in with yourself to see where am I not actually behind this 100%. Where am I limiting myself with the potential growth that I can have, but what do, do I really want that? And that is when you're actually you're recognizing the pattern in between to see where you need to be addressed. It's like addressing the weakest link. And yeah. once you address that, once you sharpen that up, all of a sudden, the whole game changes. Your clarity comes. You can start strategically th think and move forward. You feel empowered that you want to take action, that you want to actually start to inspire and, and influence those people around you to come on board as well. And that's when you actually raise your state, your vibration to play at that new f uh, frequency, that new playing field. It's, it's powerful. It's powerful stuff. Yep, I love it. And to me, the key, the entry to this is to... Be focused on aligning with your true self. Mm. It's actually getting that there is, there's this core soul spirit inside of you. And when you really connect to the truth of you, what do you truly want? Why do you want it? Without doing shit because your parents want you to or your friends or without trying to do the stuff that you think you should be doing to be socially acceptable, what does your heart really want? You know, why do you want to grow your business to half a million in profit? Mm. You know, why? The, uh, and be honest. And it's funny. The um, Like when you answer these questions really, like when you connect to who you truly, truly, truly are, as opposed to answering these things with what you think you should answer. So often when I ask people, why do you want this income? They come back with, 
oh, because, you know, um, because I'll make a bigger difference, because I'll be able to invest in charities, because I'll be able to help my family. The truth of the matter is that's all good and great. But when you start to dig even further, Quinton, we're like, okay, cool, you let, let them have it. Like, and then you go, well, what's it really going to mean for you? And still there's this, like, need to justify the money for some people. They're still not really getting to the core of why do they want it? Mm. And until you get to the core, until you get to that core where something snaps in them, until you, we are truly authentic with ourselves, truthful with ourselves, aligned with ourselves, and are honest about why we want our business to grow, there's going to be friction because guess where flow occurs? Flow occurs when we are authentically tuned in, tapped in, aligned. Yeah. You know, if if you want to, so to me, like I was, you know, I was thinking to myself, okay, well then why do I want to go into the seven figures? I'm like, okay, and, to, and same thing. I'm like, oh, that means I'll be able to make a bigger difference, yada, 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 right? The um, But when it came to, when, it, when shit came to shove, so to speak, the true is that M? Yeah, she just got home. <laughs> hello, hello, gorgeous M. The um, yeah, like it was interesting because in really getting like tuning into your own inner self, your own higher self, and asking yourself true questions that have you align with who you are at core, which then for therefore call out inspired action within us. Yeah. Action doesn't feel like action; it feels like just like fun. What I realized it's like how myself, it's meant to be. You feel you feel comfortable. You feel great doing it, versus yep. hating the idea of doing it. Um, yeah, and that that's where the magic actually happens. Yep. And here's the thing: if we don't have a good enough reason, a good enough why, to to actually grow our business, what you'll find is we don't survive the journey. And why exists in two ways: there's a mission for your business, the what it does for the world. But there's also a personal why. If you don't know your personal why, your reason for creating this business, the time, the freedom, the whatever it is that you're going to get out of this, if you don't have both of those whys quite fine-tuned and articulated and, you know, and, and like soaring through you, we lose momentum. We get deflated. And we get friction. It yeah. becomes hard to climb up that hill, you know. And so for me, I freaking love luxury. I do. I, you know, I love money because I love luxury. I love pretty things. I love, you know, good quality things. I, I love, you know, first class and I love, does that make sense? Like, yes, totally. I love designer clothes and I love. And bus rides. rides. <laughs> <I do. laughs> the point I'm trying to make though is me connecting to the truth, which is I actually love luxury. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way, people. The, um, there's nothing wrong with you admitting to certain things like that. It doesn't make you a bad person. And I think that's that, where a lot of people may object to the idea of actually having that self-realization for the um, not wanting to admit to it for what someone else might think of them for admitting that. And that's when they're actually holding themselves back, not being able to be their true self and connecting with their, whether it's their personal why, but they can't actually express themselves for who they are then being able to admit that, fuck, I love luxury. Like you're saying, and it's it's almost um, not really caring about the what others think anymore. It's really this is what's going to drive me, and this is what I do this for. Yeah, exactly. And so, yes, yes, by all means, have have personal goals to make a difference. I've got goals to make a difference on this planet, mm. not just in the area of helping business owners become the best, awesomest leaders that they possibly can be, so they can achieve the time and the money freedom and the impact they want to on the planet. But to me, it's other things. Like it's, you know, it's raising money for really awesome causes that, you know, help less, less advantaged people, you know, grow and, and experience a better way of life. Yeah. I've got goals around that kind of stuff too. However, ultimately, as a human being, you know, I think that if, if these people that had the purpose of growing their diff, their, if, if I hear people say, I'm growing my business so I can have a charity so I can make a bigger difference, so I can you know invest money and save the forest and save the animals and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And here's what I know. I know that people with a true mission, when it's truly in line with you, when it's like locked in, in line with you, it, it sends a fire through every cell of your being and you don't stop. You just keep going. You're relentless. Yeah. So to me, if you say, I'm growing my business because I want to have the income to create charities – 
and you're not really doing anything about it, that tells me that that's not your true goal. Mm. It's not your goal for having money in business and growing your business at all. That's what you believe you should say because it sounds right. And it doesn't mean that it's not your third or fourth or sixth goal that once you have the money, you won't do really cool things with it. But if it was true, Quinton, would you agree with me if it's 100%, real? 100%, yeah. Oh, you just there's just something that awakens in you that it it wakes you up at three in the morning with ideas. It has you like it just it does. There's just something greater than ourselves. When we align with who we truly are, magical stuff happens. Yeah. And, 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 and when those when those magical things happen, make sure that you've got a your recorder or you've got a notebook around and have that all over the house. Like have that in the toilet, have that in the kitchen, wherever it happens, so you can note it down next to your bed. So when that that magical stuff happens, you've got a place to record it before it gets lost in the woods again, before yes. it's gone. Make sure that yes. you capture it. And it's funny because so for me, inside of my phone, I've got like we've all got well, most people like we've got some form of note taking ability in a smartphone. And for me, I do like I just wake up in the middle of the night and I've got so like I just I have I've got like all my notes and I write stuff in there. I create events this way. I literally will wake up at four in the morning with an idea. And I'll just be like, oh, and I'll start creating content and writing content. I don't know if you can see that, but um, that's awesome. That's just me waking up writing content. And around my house, the same thing. I've got whiteboards. I've got whiteboards in my um in my coaching room. I've got whiteboards in my office. And I just get up and I write stuff. I'll show you. There's one of them with crap on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sharing this because it feels freaking awesome to be in this state. This is this is what I call business freedom. This is because I'm so happy, you know, that work turns into play. This is how you grow a business in flow. Yeah. I don't stress or worry, you know, I'm not sitting there consumed by scarcity. And you've been with me long enough to know that I don't call up and have those types of conversations with you. The um to me it's a when we align, we number one take full responsibility, one hundred percent responsibility for our resulting business and we never point the finger at subcontractors, at people we've hired, at courses we're doing, at staff, at the weather. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's raining for months. It must be it the has. weather. <laughs> it must be. It must be the rain. When we when we align with our true like best self, our spirit, our insert whatever you, you know, believe in, I do believe we always point the finger back. And even if we have a human moment and we lose our shit for five seconds, we quickly remember, oh, shit, hold on. This isn't resourceful. Now let's go back and what's going on with me? We ask ourselves, you know, we go, okay, well, why am I creating this? You know, what's the gift in it? You know, what could I learn from it? And ultimately, how can I take full responsibility for it? You know, the, the better the questions we can ask ourselves as business owners, the more we flow. Yeah. And we... It really is that. It's a understanding that the universe is working for you. The law of attraction is constantly on. It's not like something that turns off, you know, at night time or on Tuesdays because it's tired. The, um... <laughs> Especially on Mondays. <laughs> oh, it does not like Mondays. <laughs> it's constantly on. Yeah. And that means that – and it's giving us more of what we are. It's giving us more of what we're vibing at. And if we're vibrationally at a certain point that we're not manifesting the stuff that we want in our business, we've got to ask ourselves, what's going on? You know, what do I need to clean up inside of my belief system, inside of my state and vibration? You know, am I currently vibrating like a used car salesman and that's why no one's buying? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully. Um, One of the, one of the the key things that, that I found helps me, um, and being all parts of numbers and met, track and measure to know whether you or not you're making progress. Um, here's something that our listeners can can apply and helps them get clarity as to what the limiting beliefs are. You know when you get that um, that voice come in your head that tells you that you can't or you shouldn't or whatever it is that that's telling you to stop or to limit yourself. The moment you capture that voice and you take it out of the imaginary world in your mind. 
and you bring it to the physical world and you write it down on a piece of paper and you literally write down all of your thoughts that is whether it's a thought that that's that stops you from being productive that um that that thing that's on your mind the moment you take it out of your mind and put it on a piece of paper you can now start to to measure and to see the progress as to how your thoughts are evolving and what are you focusing on and by the end of the day once you've collected those those thoughts those those limiting beliefs just by simply acknowledging and stating behind it how you wish it to be it all of a sudden you recognize it and that's the first thing is to have the awareness around it for you to be able to do something about it so simply just stating it out and it may be foolish if someone else has was to read that and they might think you're crazy but do it for yourself that you can actually now start to see that on these days you've had x amount of these kinds of thoughts something else was taking over your mind and then you can start to see how it's progressing into more of getting you excited getting you in a certain place where you want to get shit done and you actually make progress. The other great point, and two, you know, have you ever noticed, Quinton, that when you're stepping outside your comfort zone in a pretty big way, that voice gets pretty loud? Yeah, totally. It's one of the first and, things that kick in. Yep. I remember years ago, gosh, this was like probably 15 years ago, I was doing a, um, a personal development program. It was a, uh, an audio one, so I'm driving along in my little car. The uh, or car, whatever the car, the, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> listening to this. And it was actually really cool. Uh, gosh, I wish Dr. Robert, I think it was Dr. Robert Anthony. Um, but I could be wrong. So I'm just trying to do a shout out, but I could be way off the mark as a while ago. <laughs> and I was talking about ego. I was actually saying how, you know, the ego, when you look at the, the human being, our character, um, our ego has a purpose. So our ego's purpose is to keep us alive. Yeah. It is. The, um, without your ego, you you probably do dumb you do, you do dumb shit, then you probably be dead by now. The uh, its purpose is to keep us alive. It's a don't jump off that cliff, you know, without a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> you, what are you? Yeah. Now here's the thing, that to keep us alive, the ego also likes to you know it likes it when we're safe and we're in our own little bubble and <coughs> you know we're not really taking a great deal of uh, of risk. So it's not a big fan of risk. And to me, whenever you have that fearful voice enter your head, it's purely that you're in a place where you're about to stretch, stretch your comfort zone. Mm. And this is ego trying to keep you safe and get that too. I think in identifying that that's the role, it's like, okay, well, that's your job. And right now, like I get you just doing your job. Thank you. And just say thank you to it. It's funny. As soon as you thank the ego, it's got no like rebuttal. You know, usually when we rebut, it's because someone's pushing against us. Yes. Yeah. So it's, you know, to me, when if this happens, like if I do stuff that's stretching my comfort zone, and I do it quite often, and every now and then I'll hear this voice. I've gotten to a point now that I've stretched my comfort zone so many times, I barely even hear this person anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, but every now and then it will it'll pop up. Yeah. You know, I'll, I, it'll just will. Like the... I've done all sorts of things and just it might pop in for a second. Ah, are you sure about this? And by by identifying that one, that's their role. Two, by not fighting it and just saying, thank you, got it. Like, thank you. Like in your head, say thank you. It stops the conversation. It actually, thank you, got it, thank you, yeah. appreciate you, doing a great job there, ego. You know, just it, it's, it changes the game because then all of a sudden you realize it's actually not authentically you. Yeah. You're not being in alignment with yourself. Fear is not you being in alignment with yourself. It's not. You know, when we're in alignment with our true self, we actually experience high vibration. We experience hope, energy, excitement, uh, love, joy, like all the good stuff. Opportunities, yeah. We see opportunities. And it's funny, like, you know, when you're in that state, you look for opportunity. It's not even that you look for it, you just notice it. Yeah. You, your eyes look like you just see things differently. When you're in the state of true alignment with yourself, you don't, you kind of don't, you don't take shit so seriously. You don't get upset about little tiny things. Mm. Like in, if you're stuck in traffic, you don't swear and lose your shit. Or if you're stuck in a queue at the post office, you don't make it out like someone's pulling out your big toe. The, <laughs> Like when you're in flow, when you're in alignment. Now, here's the thing that when we're in that state, it has people want to do business with us. 
it magically man like it attracts people to us. Yeah. Because we because we're vibing in a cool like we want to people want to hang out with people that have a cool vibe. Yeah. You know, and that's want, one of the first like, things really, that you can like, raise. You yeah. Yeah. Like, if you've got a cool vibe, oh, I just want to be around you. I want to talk. Like, I so look forward to doing marketing with Vino and Quinton because Quinton's got a wicked awesome vibe. <laughs> and I just love talking to him. But it's true. You know, so if, if you were all like, oh, you know, how's your week, Quinton? Oh, look, you know, we did this and all oh, that didn't work. And oh, it's a bit hard. And well, October's always our, our worst month. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. You won't be wanna you won't wanna ask me again the next time because the answer's usually the same. It's it's interesting. I was um, at a Jay Abraham intensive um, just recently, and when we were there, we got Jay Jay's um, Jay's whole background is so vast, and the reason for that is he connects with each and every person that he has the opportunity to. Whether it's the janitor, whether it's the receptionist, whether it's the multimillionaire, or whether it's the professional athlete, he doesn't discriminate amongst them, but he's curious to know how they do what they do and what gets them a certain outcome in their respective field. Um, and it can be as limited as how do you become happy about your job if it's a, if it's a janitor that's overly excited and passionate about what he does. It's, it's those kinds of things that he learns. And his scope isn't just here. His scope is actually so vast because he enjoys having those conversations with them. Um, and that's when he then links it from so many different areas, making it applicable in this particular um, industry. But beyond that, how he developed that is to have conversations with all these different people and actually be curious about what it is that they um, that they have to offer. So during the lunch break, he said, go out and meet with five new people. Go have lunch with five new people that, that you haven't met in this room and go and have lunch with them. Have a 10-minute lunch and then you have an hour and a half that you can actually have this conversation. I want you to ask me three questions. Well, actually four questions. I only wrote down three. But it was mainly around what is your biggest um, challenge in your industry and how do you solve this particular challenge that you have identified for yourself? And it is getting their perspectives on, on how to solve this. And that's how you then learn and grow. But the funny thing was, I, I wasn't even conscious of it. I was just being me. And for some reason, I was sitting there and people were just coming left, right and center sitting next to me. Before I knew it, I was just around and people talking in this ear and in that ear and I'm trying to be in different conversations and that person's trying to grab my attention. What do you do? How do you do that? Wow, that's so awesome. But it's me actually getting the conversation back to them for them to engage and more I'm doing that, people are just more and more drawn towards it. Now, here's the cool thing. Afterwards, when we were debriefing, this is when we went to the winery and um um, we were just having a conversation and uh, one of the, the, the people there, they, they brought up, oh, what was that other person's name? Or have you met this? And I'm like, yep, that's Liz, that's Dave. And just left, right and center. And they go, wow, you're such an amazing networker. You're really on top of it. And I'm like, I wasn't even meant to be. I wasn't even trying. It was just the fact of we were just hanging out. And it is when you come from that point when you're curious about other people, your energy goes up and then they want to be around that. And when you have when you have that ability to just raise yourself to be in that that state where you're like fuck I'm I'm cool I'm happy I, I can do things and I'm ready to get shit done that attracts the people around and that's the quickest and easiest way for you to start recognizing these different opportunities. Oh, 100 percent. To vibe is everything, guys. Like it's everything. If you feel great, you're in a great vibe. If you know right now, I feel. If you're feeling, you can feel it. You know, you're. We've got this. Um, We've got this gauge inside of us that tells us if we're connected or we're not, if we're aligned or we're not. When we feel great, we're aligned. When we don't feel great, we're not. It's really that simple. And so ultimately, you want to have strategies in place to keep yourself aligned and to get yourself back to being aligned as quickly as possible, you know, if all shit hits the fan. Yeah. Um, so if your ego is, you know, like really quite persistent with the fear conversations, no. And like trying to fill your head with the illusion of scarcity, which does not exist. The um, if you don't have strategies that help you get back into you know into flow, into connection, we we find ourselves well, quite frankly, being sold by the ego. Yeah. You know, we be we be we be sold by that fearful voice. And either you're running your own life and you're doing the selling in this world, or you're being sold. And I don't care what you say. That's the truth. 
that either we are the ones creating and we're inspiring or we're being created, you know, by our inner voices and by external voices as well. Would you yeah, agree with that? 100%. And it's, and it's even in this conversation right now, it's, it plays out in such a meta level where the listener right now is being influenced by us to be able to take this on board. On another level, you and I having this conversation right now, me speaking right now about this is trying to influence just yourself and the listener to be able to take my belief and apply that. And the moment you either nod your head as you do now, you take it and as the listener nods his head, but it's if you have something else to say, then you're trying to influence me on that level. And that is just this constant romance that goes backwards and forwards and it is how you actually adapt to it to try it on to yes. experience it and take it or you completely reject it and still put your own worth forward um yep. and that's how you go it's either being influenced or influencing yep and there's no like please get guys that there, there is no like you have to be the influencer all the time well if that's the case you're not going to take on the growth like be open to yeah. a different way of it's more just understand that there are certain things that you can open yourself up to and take guidance. So to me, I've got a filter. If it feels good and if it takes me to a better life, an even better feeling of awesomeness, then I'm going to listen to it. If it doesn't feel good and it's actually limiting me, then I'm not going to listen to it. So if my ego is like, Gabby, you don't do that because what if and blah, 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 I'm like, thank you. Got it. You're doing a great job you know, for what you do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a crack because ultimate, and then I sell the ego. I do. You should listen to the conversations <laughs> in my head. I'm like, I do. Like one of the things I do is I'm like, oh, ego, 10,000 years from now, we won't even remember this. Even if we fail at it, you know, we're going to die. You know, what's the worst that could happen? The, um, and it works. The, the ego is all right. The, I calm my ego down. I get it to feel safe again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the, oh, the inner workings of the Gabby. The, <laughs> but it's funny. Like to me, whenever we're in flow, magic happens and all sorts of things, like awesome things happen where most of the time we don't even see the magic. Sometimes we're lucky enough to capture the magical web that is life that's kind of bringing things to you in this magnificent little way where decisions get made. And the whole thing sort of ripples through and you find yourself in the right place at the right time talking to the right person and it all just beautifully like melds together. The other last week I went to run a, um, a, a workshop. So it was all about culture and staff training and whatnot. I went to a little meeting with one of my awesome clients. The, um, and on the way back is a car dealership of a car that I've been thinking about for the last few months now. Having a finance brokerage, I actually had uh, one of the car dealerships under our uh, under our umbrella. I told them the car I wanted, and they were to look out for a specific one for me. Yeah. The um and this particular car is kind of rare. Like the, the just people aren't selling a lot of them. It is a Anywho, hot car. On the sorry. It is a, it's a hot freaking car. very hot car. <laughs> The, um, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. So here I am. I'm driving. I'm driving to her, and um, and I was looking at getting this car, like now-ish, sort of November or, or late. It was meant to be my birthday present. So I'm like, oh shit, I haven't really like called the dealer about the um the car. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop in to the dealership on the way home because I was literally driving past the dealership. I'm like, I should stop in. And I've thought to stop into this dealership before. I just didn't. The um I was in an Uber, but that, that doesn't matter. I just didn't. Anywho. So I'm driving on the way back. I um, I finished the workshop a little bit sooner, so I had even more time up my sleeve, which was awesome. And then something in the afternoon I was meant to do rescheduled, so I had all like this almost the whole afternoon free yeah. until about 3 p.m. ish or 4 p.m. ish. Anyway, so I get there. This is this is the cool part. This is so cool, right? I get to the dealership and um and I'm looking for my car and I can't find it. And I'm like, oh, I found it and it's beautiful and it's in the gorgeous color that I absolutely love. And I speak to the salesperson and he lets me in and I have a seat and I, you know, check it out because I only ever saw it in, um, on pictures. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, it's even more sexy in real life. I'm thinking it's so pretty. The um, It's a convertible. So he puts the top down. I'm exploring and, and doing some stuff. And um, and then he, I say, okay, well, look, you know, how much is it? Um, how much, what's your best price on it? He said, well, it's funny you should say that. We've got the new model coming out, the 2017 model's coming out next month. And so we've just gotten a huge rebate on this car. 
the um, I can do it for X figure. That's right? awesome. Can, can you, and by I'm the way, like, kill the suspense oh. and tell us what car it is? I mean, you're, you're oh. talking it up. It's convertible and it's the beautiful color that you want. What is it? <laughs> it's, it's an Infiniti uh, Q60. So a little while ago, um, Nissan came out with its own luxury label called Infinity, which yeah. I absolutely love. I love the concept of Infinity, and they've gone nuts on just the attention to detail and the beautifulness in it. I love it because it's made in Japan, nothing against European cars, the, um, and I love that it's a bit unique, so it's not nothing against, you know, Mercedes and all the other cars that are not – my point is I love it. Yeah. The, um, anyway, so, so then he lets me take the car for the whole day so I can drive it around and just see if I love it. Great sales, great sales technique. <laughs> the um, – and so when I, when I came back, I negotiated even further. I ended up getting the car $26,000 dollars $26, $26, below uh, recommended retail, which I think wow, is awesome. That is freaking now, brilliant. Just get this though one car left, one car left. They had no more. There, there was none, like the, literally the last one, because the, it was the last one and they had a big rebate on it. The, um, the other dealers, there's only two dealerships that, um, that had this, 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 this particular, Infinity's only got two dealership. The other dealership was still selling their, um, their, their, their last couple before the new one comes out next month uh, for recommended retail. Yeah. So it was just, here's, my point is I'm driving along and I get this thought. I'm like, oh, I really should just pull into there and just see. Even though I've got my, one of our dealers looking out for and chasing up you know, a really good deal for me on this car. And it just so happens that that thought turns into perfect opportunity and I snap up this phenomenal opportunity where literally the price I ended up getting, you know, like they're selling two-year-old versions of this car at that price. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, the, um, brilliant. Purely because – does that make sense? Where purely because I was in the flow of uh, – I was in the flow of it all versus you know being in the friction of it that when we're like in we we're connected we're in tune we're aligned with our our um ourselves cool things come attracted get attracted to us yeah ironically though i remember with my last car i had a similar occurrence i ended up getting um that one at that was a i got that one at twelve thousand dollars below recommended retail the um purely because of the aligning forces of the universe yeah and Cool things happen when we align is the moral to the story. <laughs> it does. And you're, you're more receptive to it as well. You recognize it when you're in, a, in that higher state. Mm. It, it happens all the time. It's just whether or not you recognize it and you take, take it up on it. Um, and, and isn't that funny? Because sometimes, like you said, sometimes we see the magic. Like to me, that's magic. I'm like, synchronicity. That was a thought, action taken on an inspired thought, and the whole thing flowed. And it was funny too because Quinton and I were booked in to, to record a podcast. And I'm like, Quinton, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I've got this. I'll try. I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm buying a car. <laughs> like, you know, can we reschedule the uh, marketing with Vino? He's like, yeah. So just, oh, it was just awesome. The, um, such an awesome day. I found that every cool thing that's ever happened though, when you really look back and try and see the big picture of it all, like see the quantum soup of what made things possible. Like when you meet awesome people, you know, just the, the what has to happen in the background for that to take place. Yeah. Like my, my meeting of you, you know, meant that my meeting of you, like this is this is how I see the workings and the just the, the fix of it all. And just I love how the universe kind of like works. And I met I technically the, the meeting of you happened Five, over five years ago, it was I bought a ticket to a cruise ship. The um, now I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, no, no it didn't, but yes, it did. <laughs> I I bought a ticket to a cruise ship and went on that cruise ship. I was inspired to get a ticket to a cruise ship. The um, I went on the cruise ship and I met a girl called Kelly on that cruise ship, and Kelly and I became awesome friends. Then, a couple of years later, Kelly meets you at the seminar becomes friends with you and yeah. connects us to does that make sense like yeah, the thing yeah. like the the what has to happen and then marketing with vino was born you know but all of that stuff actually had to happen for marketing with vino to be born in the first place and to me like i do i'm like universe you rock like the cool stuff you do the webs you spin in the background ultimately to me when we're in alignment as business owners we get that our job is more 
to align and to feel epic and release some yeah. of the getting shit done and surrender and come from a place of abundance is all there is, I'm always taken care of and have some strong beliefs around I'm always taken care of, everything happens for my greater good. Yeah. No matter what happens, you know, it'll all work out. Sometimes I wonder too because what's your take on this? The um sometimes I wonder because I have been through a hell of a lot of, a lot of crap in my life. Yeah. Meaning like, you know, just all sorts of things have happened of from immigrating and living in refugee camps and from, you know, other stuff happening throughout my childhood. The um I sometimes wonder if the survivor of certain things is more equipped to stay aligned because they've survived, meaning that there's like the ego is now consciously convinced that you can survive certain things and so it lets you do more adventurous things, whereas some other people need to train their ego even more. They need to, you know, they really need to be able to develop strategies conversations a relationship with this part of themselves mm. that invokes fear and stops them from taking action on things that they really want to take action on what's your yeah. take on that um my take on that is that everything happens um for you in a sense you need to experience the things that are coming to you it's only happening to you not to anyone else even though they might be in a similar situation where it's happening to you for you for a specific reason um, and it is how you how you adapt to that and how how the evidence is there for the belief that you have around it whether or not it is good things happen to you or bad things happen to you it's the evidence that you recognize in everything around you that is either enforcing that belief or completely demolishing it and it is once it reached that that point whether it's your you're reinforcing the the positive belief of Everything, all the great stuff is happening to me. I'm, I'm taken care of. Um, everything is going to be okay. The, the more that that uh, belief is being reinforced, whether it's externally um, through your peers or family or whatever, or it's actually what you're experiencing as the individual in whatever challenge or obstacle that you're facing right now, that is what I ultimately believe is what is what's setting us apart and what is developing us to have more of it. Um, there may be a point in time where someone who has had the belief around the whole time that I've got the worst luck or only bad things happen or, um, or my family um, is always this or this only happens to me, um, that they, will, they might or they might not, but there, there possibly is um, things in happening through those challenges that they might not just foresee, but once they do get it, it's like now all of a sudden they're receiving different feedback. They're receiving a different evidence that's not completely in line that all of a sudden they did get luck or all of a sudden that didn't happen as they would have planned it. And now they're starting, whether they, they go with that road or they fall back into their own side of being comfort, it's that ego voice that is like, no, no, that's maybe just a once-off. It's that constant survival of don't go down that road. But it's who takes on that journey and it's like, cool, I'm going to see where this leads. That will then start to develop that that thinking yeah love it well to me the greatest one of the greatest muscles i ever built was the muscle of getting that when we step outside our comfort zone we get tight butt and fear kicks in yeah. the um and you know that ultimately for me the best way to overcome or to gain power over or just yeah to not be stopped by to not be stopped by the fear monster is to act anyway yeah. You know, if, if you ask anybody that's achieved cool shit in their life, they'll tell you, yeah, I was afraid, but I freaking did it anyway. Yeah. Because the reason for doing it was so important, which takes me back to that point when we started talking about today, which was when you have a strong enough why for you and why for your business, I believe you've got the ammunition then to convince the fear that you're going ahead anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If you're truly connected you? with it, if it's if it's not you acknowledging something that someone else wants to hear, if it is when you can acknowledge your true north, your your actual self, um, the good, the bad, whatever other people may think, but if you recognize it as this is your your strengths and your flaws, and you connect to that, that that'll then definitely move you forward. Yeah, guys, we invite you to do a bit of a well, a bit of a you know a belief check in that next time you're in a situation 
and things aren't working or you're not flowing, ask yourself, well, what do I believe about this and is it true? And and when I say is it true, is is this the truth I want to believe in? You know, because is this belief taking me to my goal or is it actually stopping me from getting there? Mm-hmm. And if it's stopping you from getting there, ask yourself, well, what would be a better belief? Okay, a better belief would be insert hence belief here. Yeah. And change, change, consciously choose to, you know, to live and grow inside of your business. Do things that make you feel epic and take care of your mental and emotional state. A few webinars, a few webinars, a few podcasts ago, I remember Quinton saying that every single day you have a thing where you're like, I'm going to look after my body, I'm going to look after my mental and emotional state. And you think of something you can do to make sure that this muscle, this this brain, this mind is nurtured and taken care of every single day so it stays in its optimum. You know, all of this stuff adds to the feeling of and the being of aligned. And when we're there, cool shit happens. The universe just conspires, conspires for you. Here's the thing, though. It does it anyway. When we're not aligned, then we just get sh- bad shit. The, the, the web, you know, gives yeah. us crap that's not. We stub our toe. The, you know, we run out of bread. We <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Catch the red light. <laughs> you catch the red light. There's no more avocados left, or the avocado's got a brown bit in the middle, and I can't use it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, these are first world problems. I love it. Thank you so much. What an awesome conversation. I've loved it. I was, ah, Thank you for sharing your wisdom. You're absolutely amazing. Um, for everyone that is listening and wants to continue the conversation and actually connect with Gabby and myself um, to continue forward on this, or even share some of your stories. We invite you to come and join Marketing Movino Club. It is like the show, but we get to hear from you. Go to marketingmovino.com and just click the button that says join the club. One of the legends, they will welcome you and we will welcome you. And we can continue on to get to know you a little bit more and actually help you grow your business, create the the leverage, help you achieve the financial freedom and live the lifestyle that you want to live. Um, that's essentially why we got into business, isn't it? Like no one signed up for the nightmares of the business. We signed up because we had a dream. We had a certain thing that we wanted to achieve and we want to help you get there. Um, so continue the, the conversation. Go to marketingovino.com and click the button. That was just a complete off the top flow. Um, it sounded amazing. Maybe you should script it. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for listening, guys. This has been an amazing episode. And also check out our unplugged version. The unplugged is Marketing of Vino off this off the show. And it's where Gabby and I go off after this call and just continue the conversation where we share things that are currently going on in our current businesses and our lives and how we help each other go from that and go to the next level, which is next level from these conversations that take place in the Marketing Novena. You're invited to join us. Um, Gabby, thank you so much for your wisdom. It's been amazing. And until next time, lots of love. Uh, lots of love. Thank you, Quinton. You are a freaking rock star. Human, humans, I was going to say humans, beautiful <laughs> humans, beautiful people. <laughs> God. <laughs> a pleasure and honor as always. And chat with you next time. Ciao. You've been listening to Marketing with Vino. If you enjoyed this episode and want to access the resources discussed in this episode, go to marketingwithvino.com and select which episode you've listened to. 